I want you to, uh, I want you to hear this. See, every believer has the ability to, we're in God's image, in his likeness. So every, everybody has the ability to express God and to reveal God. Uh, this is an exciting thing to be able to express God and to reveal God. Now, you see, you were created. Well, I should say this. You were born into a world that you were not created to live in. Now, see, you were born into this world, this fallen world. This is the world after Adam fell. Before Adam fell, it was a completely different looking place than you live in right now. So you were born into a fallen world. So you were born into a world you were not created to live in. So you wasn't born into a natural world. You were born into a subnatural world, below natural. And so what you need, and see, and here's the thing. It's just like when, when Jesus was spoke to the storm and the master spoke to the winds and waves and said, peace, be still. He released his word, which is a supernatural. So he took, and supernatural means out of natural. Subnatural is below natural. The actual natural world is what Adam lived in before he sinned. So when this storm kicked up and tried to stop the will of God, and every storm is to try to stop the will of God. And when this storm kicked up trying to stop the will of God, Jesus released the out of natural, the supernatural word of God. It reached into the subnatural, which was the storm, and pulled it up to the natural. And there was a great calm. There was such a calm that the scripture says it scared the disciples more than the storm scared the disciples. They were, people have grown used to living in a subnatural world. And so a lot of people, when you start teaching about the absolute goodness of God and how good God is and the power of God and the supernatural, um, putting things right again, you know, the Lord had given me a word. He said that I, he talking about himself. He said, I'm the perfect. And he said, you're the imperfect. He said, I give you a voice into the perfect and you give me a voice into the imperfect. And he said, so when you speak into the perfect, I can send the perfect into the imperfect and pull the imperfect back up and make it perfect. And we call that a miracle. So uh, when people start hearing these things and they teach so much, you've got to go through a storm. You must go through this storm. God has got me in a storm and this and that. It's because when things are righted to its rightful place, it scares them more than the storm scared them because they're so used to rowing against a storm. They're so used to fighting against a storm and saying, I'm so battle weary. I'm so beat down. I'm this and I'm so fatigued. I'm so tired. But they're used to it. And if you start talking about how we can pull this up to a natural state, to live in it the way Adam saw it, it scares them. And so they fight against that. Oh, no, no, you must suffer. You have to suffer. But that's not the will of God that you suffer. Jesus suffered for you, so you didn't have to do that. So we have to release his word, the supernatural, into the subnatural, use our faith and pull it up to its natural state the way it should be. Hallelujah. And the scripture talks about in James, it says, if any man's tempted, tested, or tried, don't let him say God did that. For God can't be tempted, tested, or tried with evil, and neither will he tempt, test, or try any man. And what does evil mean? Anything that's not as it should be. See, that's subnatural. Pull it up to natural, it becomes a, a peace and a calm and the state God meant it to be in. And that scares a lot of people. Who does it scare? Not the world. Not the world. It scares disciples. It scares disciples. 
See, that's just like the world feeds and runs off of off of uh, the love of money. The, not money, the love of it. Because money is the thread that touches everything in your life. See, you can't do anything without money. You can't do anything without it. You can't eat without it. You can't drive without it. You can't have electricity without it. I can't do this broadcast without it. Everything, your clothes, your food, everything, money touched it somewhere. So that's the thread that runs through the fabric of your natural existence. So if, if you can let God touch the end of that thread, then the devourer has to turn the rest of it loose. And whatever was subnatural then can be rebuked and pulled up to a natural state. But this scares people. Not just people, the money, uh, uh, the world loves money. It loves to prosper. It don't have any, it don't have any qualms at all about living in a, in a uh, high dollar expensive house. It don't have any qualms at all about flying the best planes, driving the best cars. It likes to get on yachts and party until everybody's so drunk they fall overboard. It loves to go into the extravagant and build things that are useless to anyone else. And just to have, there's people with, that they, they have money to the point, I mean, the world does now, to where they don't wear prescription glasses, some of them, when they drive, they have prescription windshields. Just think of that. And so you've got all of this going on. It don't scare the world to prosper. It scares disciples to prosper because they're so used to battling the subnatural and living in it. If they ever see the natural, it scares them. It scares them. Now, the reason I'm talking about this today, for two days, God has spoken to me about this. I was doing a stream uh, in India. I was uh, with a man in India, and I was talking about it, and he began to ask me questions, and and they, he likes to ask me questions, and it's a, a powerful program. And uh, he said, what about the wealth transfer? What about uh, all of this, and how does that happen, and so on and so forth? And so... I didn't really, wasn't expecting the question. And so the Lord had me start talking about it. And then on the Church International uh, stream Sunday, this past Sunday, Krista was teaching over the offering. And the Lord showed me a whole revelation about the tithe. And he said, come on here today and share this with the 11th hour family. Because the way governments are right now, have you not noticed that that there's so much blessing in the earth that they're having to create shortages? They're having to create them, and they're having a hard time at it because about the time they rip one plant up, three replaces it. I mean, God has his hand on everything right now, and it's just flourishing, flourishing, and they can't make a legitimate shortage. They just can't seem to do that. So he began to talk to me about this, and he wanted me to tell you that no matter what the governments do, no matter what anyone else does, he has given you and me a way to come up out of the subnatural and live in the natural. Hallelujah. Now, how do you do that? Well, the Lord gave The Lord told Adam in the very beginning, he said, in Genesis 2, he said, see these trees? He said, all these trees will produce for you freely. He said, you have to give me that tree. Talking about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so the tree of the knowledge of of good and evil became his tithe tree. As long as he gave God that one, all the rest of them produced freely for him. And notice there was no intruder in his garden. Nothing. As long as he gave him the tithe, 
off of all the other trees. 